So this is this is the official. This is the version. If you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening to the audio version, the show just began now. But if you listen to the Facebook version, which is on the Liberty Principle Facebook page, you missed uh, what time is it here? Nine. You missed a you missed a, a wham bamming slam a jamming six minutes before the show began on YouTube and on on the audio version. We're gonna get right to our first story for our first segment, and our first segment is well. First, we got to shorten that leash, right? Yes, Larry, flow is kind of hot. Yes, we have to we have to shorten that leash. We have to tighten it up like a choke chain. <laughs> oh yeah, this is choke chain kind of news too. Let let's let's just let's just hit the bump. Our course of association shortening the leash on their pets. We cover stories of the state, the government, the coercive enterprise, the coercive association, plotting to or succeeding in shortening the leash on those they presume to rule. Welcome to a shorter leash. You're going to love this. You're going to, I don't even know, because normally you take a little time to review stories before the show, but, but you had some stuff happening uh, I believe that there was an invention that happened in your life, an intervention. Some, some, some people that loved you were trying to gather around you and talk about your fried bacon problem. Um, uh, as yeah, I mentioned you, earlier, you didn't receive that very well. As as I mentioned earlier, Paul, yes, you, you did. Adolf Hitler, coming. you Adolf Hitler <laughs> and Godwin were sitting around talking about the oh, Godwin best was way there, to cook. Yeah, yeah, talk about the best way to cook bacon. Hitler's said, what do you think, Paul? And you said, bacon. And Hitler says, I agree. And Godwin just shook his he, head in disgust. He just made a note, mental note. I'm going to call it Godwin's Law, but I don't I don't know what it is, but I'm going to call it that. So, yeah. When the, sub, when the subject of baking versus frying bacon comes up, uh, after a certain amount of time, some, some bacon baking Nazi will come into the room and, and start spewing his stuff. That's Godwin's other law. <laughs> Godwin's other law. If you look on Wikipedia under Godwin's law, it will footnote to Godwin's other law. And that's what it is. <laughs> so so you didn't get to see this news. So this is new to you. I'm going to be reading you brand new news and you get to respond to it like lifetime. Are you ready? I am ready. So the title of this is, uh, is Treasury's Proposed Digital Dollar a Police State Dollar? That's my... And that's where we get the title for the show, by the way, the police state dollar. Uh, the, the Bitcoin czar, that's what I'm calling him, by the way, because he's taken it upon himself to declare war on Bitcoin. And Bitcoin, really, I'm using it as the catch-all for all cryptocurrency. So he's, he's, de he's de uh, pretty much declared a war on cryptocurrency. And if you go to iState.tv, you, you can find stories about this guy, the Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin, Mnuchin, M N. Mnuchin. How, how do you pronounce it? Mnuchin. Mnuchin. Oh, that you. You know what? You he, would he's, know he's how to pronounce up, his name. He's caught up in his own minutia. One of your fried bacon buddies, no doubt. That's how you know. So he wishes. <laughs> you know, you can't play it off. I know. So he's suggesting that down the road, he buys the US... bacon out of a can, pre-cooked, <laughs> warmed, warmed up in the sun. You know what? Just we're gonna rename the show Bacon, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> shorter bacon, longer bacon, <laughs> off the bacon. No, no off the bacon. No <laughs> off, off the, the bacon. No off, off the, the bacon. plate. Off, off the, the plate. plate. Yeah. Oh yeah. So off the plate. so he's suggesting that down the road the U.S. dollar could be converted to a digital dollar, and uh, to to people who really don't know basic math. This might seem like a great idea and great news to some of you, but to those of us who understand the ramification of a centralized digital currency, still based off based off of fiat, uh, I think I think it's fair to say that we can see the police state empowering dangers of a digital currency. Am I right? Are you are you following me here? So, yes, it uh, is. As as a matter of fact, I think if the full the full weight and force of the U.S. government is laid down upon cryptocurrency. It may eventually be as difficult to use cryptocurrency as it is to acquire and use cannabis, heroin, 
cocaine. Not going to get to it. Yeah, it's, they're going to cut you off. Yeah. And then you're going to start to see uh, crypto gangs form to deal the crypto. D- did you see that that uh, little video clip? Or maybe, I don't know if it's a full video or, or just a GIF. And yes, it's called a GIF. Not a GIF, a GIF. It's GIF, a, it's a GIF, 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 it's GIF, a GIF, 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 It's a GIF. 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 It's a GIF. 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 You know GIF. what? We're going to rename this show Bacon GIF GIF. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I know, so you said gift first, but anyway. So <laughs> I did, the, I did. It is the, gift, the, actually. I was just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, there, there's a gift uh, picture file, whatever. A gift file of of somebody with uh, like a, like a squeegee, like you would see uh, somebody squeegeeing up the water on the ice after the zamboni goes through, something like that. So anyway, uh, this person is on the shore of the ocean, and the waves are coming in. This person is taking the squeegee and pushing the water back in the ocean. And it says, uh, this is what it looks like when governments try to regulate cryptocurrency. Yeah. So I'm I'm not really worried. Well, yeah, I, I, I get that. But I, I'm I'm talking to the folks outside of the Liberty Bubble. And there's a message for those folks that if you think this is a good idea, imagine a state that can successfully create a digital currency is a state that can even more thoroughly control the monetary system. And you think you're living on Keynesian economics now. This is a state that can more easily create currency, actually literally from thin air this time, like literally, literally from thin air, and then remove digital currency from circulation, enabling it to artificially create an, uh, inflation or deflation, just just like that. Well, they don't, they don't like deflation as Keynesians. They, they, he- they do every once in a while. They, they'll apply de, de, de deflationary tactics every once in a while to... Mildly deflationary. Oh, yeah, very briefly, very briefly, yeah. on their way to rocketing towards inflation because inflation yeah. is cashola, such as it yeah, is for it, the government. There's there's an old phrase. Uh, it, it is, I've heard it mostly used in describing gas prices. They shoot up like a rocket and they fall like a feather. So when it comes to the <laughs> right. inflationary versus deflationary, right. think, of defla- think of government central banking using deflation as the feather. You know, just, it, it's, it's it comes like, down as a feather. You get a tiny bit of deflation. You just watch it go back and forth, back and forth, right. back and forth, back and forth, just back and forth, down, forth gently, back and forth, back and gently, forth, yeah, back and forth. Lower. <laughs> down and, and then, to the left. Down and to the left. Down and to the left. left. <laughs> right. And then rocket. Yeah. Yeah, that's – so the other more – and then Paul Krugman gets in there's whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> it, it charges through a window, breaks 13 windows. Yes, you know, you know the economy's doing good then. So the other, I think perhaps more dangerous power that it grants a state is the ability to track your transactions. And if you fall into a dissident category, it instantly removes you from accessing that monetary system. So anybody, even remotely, prom- there is a practical reason to promote uh, the U.S. going to a digital currency, even if you're like an anarchist. I don't know who they are, the anarchists. It's a crazy word. But even if you're an anarchist, there's a reason that you would support the U.S. going to digital currency. If I can quote one of my favorite political libertarians, Me? Uh, Princess, Princess, Princess Leia Organa. Oh, yes. When she, she told Darth Vader, she says, Vader, the tighter you make your grip, the more star systems will fall through your grasp. That's exactly my point. Exactly. If they do this, they're going to send all kinds of folks I don't know what's the word I'm going to scampering, scampering for the underground uh, privacy coins so that they can mm-hmm. take and deal with one another. So well, that what's would be a happen- good thing. Well, here, here's what's going to happen. It's going to create an illicit market. It's going to create an underground. Uh, because if, if somebody's funds get 
gets cut off, well, they're, they're still going to need to engage in commerce. And if uh, I let's say I let's see. Let's even use the biblical version of you have to take the mark of the beast to engage in commerce and and, and to do all this stuff. Okay. All right. Let's say you got the faithful out there, just the people that say, you know what, I'm not worshiping your, your damn devil. Uh, let, let, let's say you got those people out there. Well, they still got to engage in commerce, but they're not going to take the mark of the beast. So they have to go underground. Uh, there's going to. There's going to be other currencies. It might go back to being precious metals. It might be some sort of commodity that that people find to be I it's don't gonna, particularly, it's gonna be, particularly well, desirable. It'll be those things, and it'll also be crypto on mesh networks. Yeah. So I, everybody's going to be okay. But what you have to look at is uh, – in the, the very early days of, of Bitcoin, it was a lot of libertarians getting involved in there and, and, and a lot of nerds. And in many cases, there was crossover. It, it was liber, liber nerds. Liber nerds. Liber nerds. Yeah. Scientific yeah, term, nerds. by the way. Yeah. Yeah. It, as a matter of fact, it's I mean, libertarian and nerd kind of go hand in hand because most of them are eggheads. Wait. Uh, so. I've, I've kind of fallen the libertarian kind of. Sort of. Yeah, or, and by the way, that's not, a, that's not a slur against intellectuals. That's just a, a description of the general appearance of your head. But anyway. <laughs> right. No, no, that, well, I that's, can't deny that. that. That's fact. Well, hey, Lou I, Sander actually, joined us, by the way. Hi, Lou. He joined us in the chat. Okay. Yeah, well, anyway, uh, that's that's for uh, an actual uh, uh, libertarian egghead intellectual type. But anyway, so if, if you look at the people who got into it, uh, not all of them were libertarians as time went on. It, 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 as time progressed forward after a couple of years, I, I think like 2009, it was pretty much libertarians and nerds. But a lot of other people got into it. Uh, not And not just specu speculators, not just like the Winklevoss twins and, and stuff like that, but people got into it that had an interest in the currency itself. Uh, the, there's a, a Bitcoin group down in southeastern Michigan, and I think the folks in there, not not all of them are libertarians. I saw them; they're, they're not even mint status to say the least. I and mean, there's one guy in there who's a Keynesian, and, and is is funny because he and I were talking about the need for stimulus, and I says, "Well, how do you inflate the money supply with Bitcoin?" And he's like, "Well, you can't." I says. Okay, and why 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 do you embrace Bitcoin? Why are you so active and a leader in a group of a currency that you can't manipulate the money supply to stimulate the economy with? And he just kind of gave me that glazed over look and says, "My roads." <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, because that, that's I, that, that's the go to. But the thing is, you have a lot of people that have been driven into Bitcoin, not out of an ideology, but because they're looking for a currency. They're looking for a, a, a currency that can be used as a store as a store of value. They want something that's not going to decrease in value over time. And if the purchasing power goes up, I'm, I'm not even talking about the massive spikes that we saw with the rise up to almost $20,000 per Bitcoin. I'm just talking about the, the gains in purchasing powers, which you did have under the gold standard before, uh, before the Federal Reserve took over and everything else, because you did have actual gains in purchasing power. Well, we touched they, upon this in the last show, that what you're going to experiment, ex experience – are they're they're not they're they're not going to be ideologues that are going to be looking for an escape from the tightening noose of the state. It's going to be people that just want to figure out how to make more money, how to keep more of what they own, how to you know secure themselves. They're they're not they're not ideologues. They're not anarchists. They're not libertarians. They're just but they're acting like it. Right, they're acting like it, and they don't yeah. even realize it, and they don't have to. See, that's the thing; they don't be, have to. Be, yeah, because Bitcoin is a solution to a problem. The three D printer is a solution to the problem. The ghost gunner is a solution to the problem. All, all regular these are, topics on iState.tv. Yeah, TV. yeah. All all these things are solutions to problems. If everything is going well, if 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 the if the American currency, if the U.S. government currency, the what we call the U.S. dollar, the Federal Reserve note, if everything was fine, nobody would even consider Bitcoin, except for maybe the the absolute fringe element that that 
ju- they're convinced that the U.S. economy is going to collapse in a in a year unless you take your colloidal, colloidal uranium enemas and drink your fruit drink to keep your frogs heterosexual. I mean, outside of that fringe group, there, why do you, know, you want to keep your frogs heterosexual? What are you saying? Well, because it's natural. It's, is this frog? All- are you a frogophobe? No. Okay. No, I just don't, don't be I a frogophobe like, on this show. Okay. I, I just have a problem with tranny frogs. I don't. I. It's, I, it's not I, natural. I welcome my tranny frog overlords. <laughs> but yeah, to to your point, it's it's people are looking for stuff that works, and what's happening is the state understands that there's these technologies that are emerging that are kind of giving people alternatives to the state system and they're not choosing it because they're you know they're they're like i want to reject the state i'm sick of the state they're 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 still saying pledge of allegiance they're still getting upset because people are kneeling during during my flag raising i mean these people they're still die hard status loyal members of the of the of the statist flock but they 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 just they just want to get away with stuff they just want to get they just want to keep more stuff they just want to be able to do things that they want to do instead of having the state checking them everywhere they go and well let me finish because what's happening is because of the state the and when I say the state, I mean the owners and, and the managers and the enforcers. There's owners, managers, enforcers, whatever. They're real people. The state is not some magical, mystical entity. They're real individuals that benefit directly from the type of coercive commerce that the that the quote unquote state engages in. And they see this as they see this this technology that's emerging that is that is it's it's lowering the cost of self sustainability, and that lowering of the cost of self sustainability is making the cost of being part of their enterprise all the more apparent. So they have to hide it, and the way that they hide it is they have to keep writing new laws and new regulations and making examples of more people to prevent people from going to these alternative solutions. And the people feel the pressure more from the state, which actually then drives them more to the very alternative solutions that they're trying to get them to seek or trying to get them to not seek. Mm -hmm. Did you follow that? A little bit. Nice. (laughs) Actually, I quit listening when I was waiting for my turn to speak. Oh, gosh. (laughs) Go ahead, Frogman. But seriously. If, if you look at the black markets in socialist countries, uh, Venezuela is the current example. The Soviet Union, East Germany, all behind the Iron Curtain. Uh, if not for the if not for the underground economies, the black and gray markets. So I'm not just talking about vice. I'm not just talking about hookers and, and blow. I'm talking about food, medicine, consumer goods, uh, electronics, basic staple items. medicines the, that you can't yeah. get because of regulations, for instance. Yeah. Or because socialism isn't an economic system, it's a management system. It's the management of a dwindling supply of resources. But anyway, uh, that being said, there were people that were committed socialists that would engage in the black market. Not because they, they didn't believe socialism could work. It couldn't. But they, they did it because they had to survive. So, well, I, actually, I think there was a fair amount of skepticism. Uh, you may have met him at Liberty Fest last year, but there's this guy, Arp, from Estonia, he, and he says, uh, yeah, I, I grew up in the Soviet Union, and, and I never met anybody who believed socialism could work until I came to America. <laughs> that, that makes perfect sense. I think I oh, did he's a great meet story. him. I didn't get to talk to him for too long, but I, I think oh, I did meet him. You got to find a way to talk to him. Just make up stuff. Just make up a reason to talk to him. And I, cause he's, he's wonderful to talk to. He's absolutely hilarious. He's, he's great at telling these stories and, and it's just, you know, I, I don't even agree with him on, on everything, but I just enjoy hearing him talk so much because, because of the things he says and the way he says them. Where, where, where is he? Are you connected to him on Facebook? No. Oh, no, I only, I only get to talk to him about once or twice a year, but 
But it is what those, it is. that once or twice a year, what a moment. So on, yeah. on the crypto front, there is a couple of things which I'm probably going to cover. Well, one of them is, one of them is going to be the top story tomorrow. Uh, I haven't even written it up yet, but I have it in the queue of stories that I'm going to write tomorrow. And the top story that I'm going to write tomorrow is there's it's it's going to tie in two things. Really, there's a third thing which I had already uh, covered, and how China has been calling for some some global action on the cryptocurrency front. That we need global rules, and we I'm I'm using their language, not mine. We need global rules. Well, today, then, it's come out. Now, France and Germany are calling for global crypto rules. And now, the IMF, that darling of freedom and liberty and humanity, uh, I, the IMF is now calling for global rules. So this is where things are trending towards because what they have recognized, and I think it's through China, China is aggressively trying to stop cryptocurrency trading in its country. And because other countries around it have not stopped it, they can't stop it. And so now they're recognizing well, the other country, and for the other countries haven't stopped it because they can't stop it. Now, well, I, some it, of them, it, Japan is kind of been embracing it. There's some countries that are embracing it because they see an economic advantage for them, at least short term. Uh, if so if not, I spoke the language, I would be laughing in Chinese right now. Would you? Yes, I would. But I don't, why? I don't speak Chinese because the Chinese are saying, "Oh, we got to ban Bitcoin." So right. I'm just I'm I'm just gonna laugh in German. Not ah just ha. Bit, <laughs> nah, nah. so so there there's this move to create global rules. I don't know how that's gonna happen. I just know I mean I'm well, I don't know for sure, but I'm willing to bet that there are not going to that there are going to be some countries that see an economic advantage to being a crypto haven. Yeah, in the world. I, I, I imagine the, For I imagine a small the IMF, I imagine all these agencies and governments and and, and pseudo-government agencies, I, I, I just envision them with just piles and piles of stolen underwear laying around all over the place and no profits. Yeah, well, that's... That, <laughs> I, I, I think they've got a tiger by the tail. And, and the thing is, as they're getting a grasp on crypto... And they're just starting to possibly maybe understand cryptocurrencies. Guess what's coming right behind it? What? Uh, quantum computing. Ooh. Quantum computing is going to add a whole other layer of mess to, 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 the, to the countries out there. That, that recognize that if they cannot hold power over their own currency, they're, they're, they're sixth letter of the alphabeted. And I think we know what the sixth letter of the alphabet is. It comes before G. That's, that's their, their, their situation. So quantum computing, it is going to add a complexity of encryption that is algorithmically beyond what they have to deal with now. In other words, there's two great fears that the states have. I'll just call them course of associations have. One is anonymity and one is self-reliance. And if you have a currency that, that self-reliant people can, can use securely among themselves outside of the prying eyes of the coercive association, then you've created the conditions for both. So you can have both self-reliance and anonymity. And and that's that's a deadly recipe for the coercive association. I, I think I said a long time ago, the the comparison, the, okay, uh, Shane, I'll just add this, what Shane said here. Shane said, some cryptos like Nexus and Cardano are already working on quantum resistance. Okay, so, okay, now, Shane, you're talking about quantum computing being a potential 
a encryption breaker of blockchain and then there's that problem but what i'm talking about on the is the other side of the scale for quantum computing which is quantum computing as an encryption creator and yeah the blockchain's going to have some challenges from quantum quantum computing cuz quantum computing could theoretically and i'm not a tech expert i bet you Shane might know more than than i but uh, quantum computing could actually be an encryption challenge to blockchain. It could break through even like some of these privacy coins like a Man Monero. But my point is that they're just getting grasp of a technology that it's already, I mean, the blockchain's like nine years old. You think about that. They're they're just getting their their heads around a technology that, I think, I, I'm not going to say that it's going to be obsolete. I think there's going to be applications for blockchain in the future for quite some time. But as far as cutting edge, blockchain's not going to be cutting edge in the, near, in the very near future. So technology is moving so rapidly, they can't keep up with the types of regulations that they, that see, see the, the problem is that this, they're, these nation states that are at war with each other. So these technologies, like blockchain technologies, uh, what, what's 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 coming online with the power of drones and how drones can be used, to, especially in a guerrilla warfare methodology, to raise the 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 cost of coercion against an offensive force. Uh, they they can't put a total kibosh on these technologies. Because if some country decides to put a kibosh on the technologies, one of its rivals is not, and it's going to use those technologies to annihilate it militarily. So, so they can't just do away with the blockchain. They can't just do away with quantum computing. They can't just do away with 3D printing. They, <laughs> they've got to try, and, and militaries around the world, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to say this all the time. I'm going to say this many times. I go through two to 3,000 articles, just headlines, article headlines a day, sifting through what I'm going to cover on iState. I have, a, I have my own mad news gathering uh, methodology that I use. And it's, it's given me this interesting, unique perspective, seeing what's going on around the world. And <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's amazing how much how similar the issues are that so many countries are dealing with. And it almost always focuses around the ability of individuals to do things outside of the control of the state. And, and they're having a hard time uh, figuring it out. It's okay. You got, you got Facebook, you got Twitter and you got YouTube and, and the governments, they're starting to pull those social media mega beasts into their orbit. I mean, Facebook and Twitter, they just recently announced they're actually doing counter propaganda. They said they're doing this. They're doing counter propaganda to help offset extremist content. And they're doing this and they're announcing it to the governments. Hey, we're trying to help you. But... While that's happening, you have these new social media outlets that are starting to emerge, and they're on blockchains. Like yes, like 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 Steemit and uh, Bitshoot, and I don't think Mines is on a blockchain, but Mines is another. Um, so I don't think they can keep track of all this. What do you think? <laughs> I, I I think they're lost. As, as our dear friend Jeremy Hengler always Heng says, Hengler. Lo, 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 lo. Hamburglar, government is always a lagging indicator, meaning it's always behind. It's always fighting the last war. Interestingly enough, if you look at the attacks that have been uh, perpetrated against the United States of America, uh, the 9-11 attacks, World Trade Center 93, uh, the USS Cole, the, the bombing of the of the towers in uh, Dahran, I think it was, uh, Kobar Towers. If, if you look at all these different things, when was the last time that the U.S. military went up against a conventional military? When, when was the last time that they were attacked? And you could say, okay, yeah, there's conventional warfare in Iraq, uh, but all these are unconventional. And as you had mentioned, 
uh, guerrilla warfare in your rant. Uh, guerrilla warfare has been playing havoc. Yeah, guerrilla warfare has been playing havoc with this largest military in the U.S. or in the world. In, in world history, the the most deadliest, largest, heaviest, cum, encumbered military that ever exists. Yeah, yeah, the the empire, and. What has been successful? 19 goat herding schmucks that were not Navy SEALs that did not have James Bond training stopped by the hardware store, bought some box cutters, and took over some planes and flew them into some buildings. Changed America forever. Yes. And and raised the cost, tremendously raised America's cost for, quote-unquote, keeping the peace, for keeping those commercial routes open. Yeah, and 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 to, and to top it off, he says we are going to destroy the United States. They they launched the attack. They sat back and said, "Hold hold my tea," and they just watched the U.S. government do what the U.S. government does. It they they created the TSA. They created this massive apparatus to to bankrupt the, 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 the treasury. Yeah, to 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 empty the treasury. Yeah, they, they they created this massive thing. The Al Qaeda, the, the aftermath of the Al Qaeda attacks that, w- that that was created by the U.S. government, the, the the aftermath that the U.S. government created after these attacks was far more creative and far more destructive and far more costly than the actual attacks could ever dream of being. But those attacks, they made a lot of people a lot of money. So even even see the thing is. Even, even you know, the owners and managers who may have looked at it and said, oh, I see what you guys are doing. And we're not going to follow that. No, 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 no. We're not going to fall for that. We're not going to bankrupt our country and throw ourselves into endless wars that we know we can't win. Oh, wait, we can make money? Oh, yeah, we're going to do that. Let's do that. <laughs> and, and, and stretch these resources all over the place. But we're going to so, make money. But but here's here's the thing. Once again, as the lagging indicator... What have they been doing with the military since those attacks? More bombers, more fighters, more spending on on all these different things. But what has been done as far as actual uh, – let, let me start that over. What – what of the things that they've been doing, the the new bombers, the new fighters, the new tanks, which of those would have prevented 9-11? Well, not, none of them. And have you heard what happened in Syria recently to a Russian military base? No. Uh, a bunch of uh, it was it was a swarm of low tech drones that wreaked havoc on a Russian military base, and uh, I don't I don't know if they've killed many folks. You see, they don't have to kill. They don't have to even successfully destroy a lot of stuff. All they got to do is disrupt and prevent a a threat that you now have to spend money and resources defending against. So now the Russians are trying to figure out how to deal with this threat. And the Americans are are experiencing uh, these drone swarm attacks too, by the way. I mean, you know, you folks, I'm telling you, go to iState.tv, stop getting sucked into the fear porn that's out there there is some crazy stuff going on out there and yes i am telling you the drone swarm story is a good news story for people like you and i because it is showing that the 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 technological balance of power is significantly shifting towards the defensive and when it shifts towards the defensive, that means the cost of coercion significantly rises. And when that significantly rises, that means it's a whole hell of a lot harder to, 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 to hold on to large centralized uh, systems. The, the day of the small is, is upon us. We are just about on the threshold of some amazing things. Oh yeah, and then, and then there was silence. <laughs> but but everybody is is still. Did Trump say assholes or uh, who cares? I'm telling you, Donald yeah. Trump is not the story right now. 
the story right now is what's going on out there. It's it's incredible the the developments that are happening on a daily basis. Like daily freaking basis the things that are happening and and how people who are kind of okay in or is it uh I think it's Massachusetts. Where, where's uh, Cape Cod? Is that is that Massachusetts? Massachusetts. Okay, Massachusetts. In Cape Cod, Massachusetts. There's a tiny house movement. Tiny house movement is awesome. It's it's people that are reducing their imp- now. The, a lot of them are doing it because they want to save the planet. They want to reduce your imprint. I don't care why they're doing it. I mean, not that I'm against saving the planet. I don't want to say. <laughs> I don't want to sound like uh, scare the planet, but. But the tiny house movement is you can live in these homes that are like 200 square feet. And there's a fair amount of people that are very happy to live in these tiny homes. And the reason what they're, what they're coming across in, in, uh, in Cape Cod, they're coming across regulations that are trying to prevent them from doing that. And it's making it obvious to people looking on the outside, holy crap, the government is consistently getting in our way of living. Basic living it's it's happening everywhere oh it is it is and 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 that is ultimately what's going to push people towards liberty it's it ben stone has this wonderful rant that he goes into and it it's kind of based off of a thoreau quote or it, at least it lines up and th- uh, Henry David Thoreau says, uh, the government that governs best governs not at all. And when man is ready, that is exactly the government that he will have. Ben has always talked about the reason that government exists is because the demand for government exists. There is a demand for it. People want it. Right. It's right a product. Or wrongly. Yeah. It, it, it's, a, it's a horrible, useless product that makes the pet rock look very, I, very I would argue it's very not useful. useless. Okay. Not beneficial. For you. It is beneficial. Beneficial is subjective. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> what when when I mean it's beneficial, I mean it, it is providing something for you. It's not providing what you think it's providing. Yeah, m- most of most of the people most of the people demanding it falsely believe that that it's helping them, and, and yes. in reality, it's hindering them because they, these are the people that are being told that they can't live in their tiny house. These are the right. people that are being told that they have to be connected to the electricity, uh, the electric company in Alabama. This, these are the people that are going out to help their neighbors and and feed the hungry that are being arrested in California and so many other places. I don't I don't want to gloss through that Alabama story just real quick. What what I, I believe what you're referring to? There's a we covered it. We covered it last week. Oh, that's right, we did. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's one of the. It's more just one of the two thousand headlines that you read. But but here's the thing. But here, here's I, the thing. I go through about two thousand headlines a, a day, you know. <laughs> when the when the tyranny becomes so great, the demand for freedom will increase. The, the the demand for tyranny will go down, and the demand for freedom will increase. And when there's no longer a demand for the state, it will die because ultimately. Even though government exists through conquest of the of the governed, it does also exist through the consent. Even if it's even if it's implied consent, even if it's uh, consent by being roofied, but it 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 does continue to exist because people demand it. They consent to it. They want it. And when the time comes that it becomes intolerable, then you won't have that popular support for it and it will be seen as the enemy occupation that it is. So make it worse, make it bigger. As a matter of fact, matter of fact, let's have Hillary be the co-president for Trump for the next three years. Why not? Really? Let's, I mean, that's a great idea. Uh, You know, the government is you and you is the government. Not me. I'm talking about you. Uh, and, and I don't mean that of the people, by the people, for the people. I mean when uh, police knock on your neighbor's door to confiscate a gun because your neighbor was deemed to be mentally ill or your neighbor was deemed to be a threat because somebody decided to file uh, protection from a restraining order or something against them. 
and you don't stand up and go over to your neighbor's house and help them, you're part of the government. You're that's and, and and the thing is people it's not that people are looking out their window and they're afraid and thinking oh well i can't go over there i could get hurt it's not my business i'm not putting my life on the line for my neighbor no it's worse than that they're looking out the window and they're saying yeah you know if you didn't do anything wrong you wouldn't have anything to fear see they're they're doing more than just being afraid to to stop the coercion they want the coercion. They're pushing for the coercion. They're voting for the coercion. In this last election, you had a group of people that were, I mean, people vote for a lot of reasons. So I'm talking about in aggregate, the large aggregates. On the one aggregate side, you had a bunch of people that were voting for someone that was going to assure that they were going to take more money from rich people and redistribute it to, it to poor people. Uh, theft, full-on theft. And on the other side, you had a, an aggregate of people who were voting to assure that somebody was going to create a whole new uh, domestic army to round up the undesirables and send them on their way because they're stealing majurbs. That's what you had in this last election. They are the government. Mm -hmm. And without the, them, the government doesn't exist. But, but the good news is most of them are old and aren't going to be around much longer. And hopefully their, their dumb ideas are going to die with them. Because okay. quite frankly... Quite frankly, the, the the ones that you're talking about that fall in that category, those are the old farts. You're talking about maybe the Trump side. You're talking about the old farts. I'm mm -hmm. not talking about the old farts on the Hillary side. The Hillary side, that's a lot of young people on that side. And they're, they're, they're like, hey, this socialism thing sounds pretty nice. Yeah. Hey, free college? Dude. I'm, I'm a little less worried about them. What are they gonna do? Come at us with their with their bongs and dildos? Maybe. I mean, you saw what happened in Texas when uh, they they were passing some legislation that let people carry guns on campuses. They were assaulted by girls with dildos. You remember that? It happened. Ne never bring a dildo to a gunfight. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They got a lot of. Oh yeah, uh, Shane they're, pointed they're out also, they're, they're Tide, pods. Right. Tide Pods, Tide yeah. Pods, Tide Pods. Yeah, we're not gonna have her. to worry about them. We're not. We're not between gonna... between the Tide Pods, the cotton candy behind your drywall, the uh, the the lines of Ajax and Pine Sol on the rocks. <laughs> I have absolutely no concern about the left down the Sound, road. Sounds like a party, you know. They uh, the the this this group that that. You know, they, they want to tax the rich and de redistribute it to the poor. It, just like, you know, your, your, your one, your Keynesian buddy. While they're saying this, these folks, they're, they're, they're catching on to the new technologies. They're using cryptocurrencies. They're taking advantage of all kinds of blockchain technologies. And they're learning blockchain, the whole decentralized concept of blockchain. I mean, blockchain, it's... Blockchain is like, I don't say the perfect model because I don't understand it in full detail. I mean, I understand it pretty decently, but from, from my limited understanding, blockchain is kind of like spontaneous order. You know, that, that glorious uh, dream that so many anarchists have. You know, you don't, you don't have to set a whole bunch of, you know, you have some basic guidelines, and then things emerge within those guidelines. And some structures emerge and, oh, somebody's calling me, but I don't know why they're calling me right now. That is inappropriate. So, but, but it just kind of emerges. There's, there's no central authority, central hub that defines how blockchains are going, are structured. There's some, maybe some, some rules or guidelines written in the beginning, so to speak, you know, and, for some anarchists, some of the guidelines might be the NAP or property uh, rights, whatever they might be. But these people at some level are learning the principles of anarchy 
the more that they use things like blockchains. It's getting in them, man. They're going to see it working. That's going to combat Bernie. That's going to, some of these people, I understand how some of these young people are like, hey, man, free college. I mean, they have a college system, a college loan system set up. Now, you need to take responsibility for yourself. It's just like I, I got in a situation where I have a second mortgage. It's, it's a terrible deal. It's not at all what I thought it was. And I don't blame, I don't, well, I won't say I don't, I totally don't blame the, the, the people that, that I, that I, that wrote the mortgage that I signed, but I more blame myself because I didn't take the responsibility to make sure that I clearly read and understood what it was that I was getting myself into. So there's still that personal responsibility I take, but still these college kids, they're signing these, uh, these, these loans and, and they're not understanding the full ramifications that you got that loan for life. There's no bankruptcy. There's no way for you to get out under it. How is that loan secured? That loan is secured by the U S government. So the bank gives you the loan easily. It doesn't care whether you can pay it back or not because the U S government's going to guarantee it. But the U.S. government, they're going to get their money because they wrote it into the laws. You, I understand why they're attracted to free college loans. But what they don't understand is they're wanting to empower, to give more power to the very organ that screwed them in the first place. Yeah. This is the uncle that, that paid for your college and then molested you. Yeah. Or or he threw you down a flight of stairs, then molested you, and then had you pay for it. <laughs> yeah. Now, now for our listeners out there, they're saying, "Hey, are they still on on shorter leash? Have they gone to longer leash? We have What's going on? We, we never the, got to the, longer leash. Yeah, I, I think we're going to go over an hour today. Uh, we're we're not even going to touch the longer leash. We're going to go straight off the leash, which oh, is yes. my favorite part. You you want to go to off the leash now? I, I want to be off the leash. Let's go. I want, Let's... I, I, want, I want to whoosh off the leash like a rocket, like an inflationary rocket. Okay. Well, since we're late, I'm, we're not even going to a break. We're just going. We're doing it. We're, let, me, let, me, let me bring up the off. I do want to bring up the off the leash uh, backdrop. There we go. If you could see it, you'll see, the, you'll see what you're in now. You'll see the backdrop now, why, there. Why can't, why can't I hear the bumper when you, when you play it? I, I don't know. First. I got to figure it out. I had it working and then I didn't, but I, during the week, I don't have time to look into technical things. I'm working really, really hard, like from 7 a.m. Bodie, could, to... you, could, you could you help Paul out with that? I just like need to, to the... get somebody on the phone, uh, on the Skype conversation and keep play, playing around with the, the, I don't think our studio audience really cares to know. Uh, All right, let's let's do that after the show then. Cause we <laughs> well, no, we stuff. can't because I got work after the show. <laughs> I got well, business. Yeah. Right. I do. I got so, okay. So right. I I will do the bump off the leash. I'm gonna play the bump now because that was painful. <laughs> Hold on. You know what? How are others enjoying lives that exist beyond the reach of the leash of the state, the government? the course of enterprise, the course of association. How, in other words, are people living off the leash and how might you join them? Fuck you. So, <laughs> yeah, wait, I got back just in time for them to hear you say that to me. <laughs> uh, so the bump is my daughter. So who do you think I want to hear more, Lou's singing or my daughter? Okay. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. Coming up... Maybe next week. I'm not sure which show, but I will be playing a video during the show, a video of my daughter giving a poetry reading, one of her poems. And yeah, I'm a proud dad, so I'm going to display her on one of my shows because that's what I do. I asked her ahead of time, by the way. She said it was fine for me to do. So India Times recently showcased a crypto anarchist named... J.T. D'Souza. Have you ever heard of him? No, I haven't. Uh, and he believes that technology is unavoidably political. So therefore, for those who desire to achieve statelessness, it is urgent that they understand and exploit the same technology. I'm kind of paraphrasing here. That 
coercive enterprises use to extend and preserve their power, kind of what we've been talking about. Uh, what can be used to coercive uh, to coerce can also be used to liberate. And so this is this is again in India times. I don't know why they chose to do a story on this dude. It's pretty cool. The double it's it's a double edged sword. It will cut the bad guys as much as the good guys. Probably it'll cut the bad guys probably worse. I believe the phrase is uh, hoisted on your own petard. The the state is uh, very famous for hoisting itself on its own petard. In a way, Al Qaeda was just one of many petards that the U.S. hoisted themselves on. By the way, a petard is like this. It's like a little sticky bomb, and so you. It was in medieval times. You try to throw this sticky bomb over. You want it to land, stick on the wall and then blow up so you can breach a castle. But sometimes the sticky bomb would stick to you, and then you would be blown up. That's the in so in medieval times, sticky bomb stick you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'll know in medieval times, sticky bomb stick you. <laughs> So, so, here, so here you are just trying to shake this thing like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. It doesn't like, like end the like coyote. a... The, the coyote gets glue on his hand, and, and, and miraculously his hand looks like a glove. And I think a couple times he's pulled off the glove. But anyway, you're, you're the coyote. You got you got crazy glue on your hand. You're touching a bomb. You're trying to shake it to get rid of the bomb. And heaven forbid he actually try and pull the wick out of the bomb. But anyway. <laughs> that, so, would be, yeah, that would be science. They didn't know science then. So, uh, and, and now I'm gonna I'm reading from the uh, from the article here. So, uh, talking about uh, this De, 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 De Souza, he says they say his demo at the press club shows him with a candle wax and a ten rupee fevical tube. It is a must see demo about how to fake a fingerprint. The sixth and and by the way, if you go to the the uh, is daily dot live you find the archive of the show you will see the link to this story where the video does appear i have the video of them showing you how to fake your fingerprint uh in in less than a dollar or f i'm assuming they meant for less than a dollar but you know in esl so so I love the whoever wrote this. Obviously, English is not a first first language. The sixty two year old thoroughbred Moon Baker explains. <laughs> I don't know what that means. All you need is polyvinyl acetate uh, glue, melt wax in a shallow container, allow it to cool till it has a putty like consistency. Press finger into the wax, remove the finger, wait for the wax to cool till you see a negative impression of the fingerprints in the wax mold. Mix a few drops of fevicol with a drop of water. I mean, we all have fevicol. I mean, that's, that's everywhere. Coat the wax mold with the water-diluted fevicol using a makeup brush. A makeup brush. Wait for a couple of hours for the fevicol to dry. Peel off the fevicol skin. If I have to say fevicol one more time. Uh, and voila, you have a replica of the fingerprint. Curiously enough, your fingerprints change with age and environment, but the fake will last forever. So I want, I want to read here. The philosopher inside D'Souza dreams of a free and fair society. He cautions a tech Luddite like me that not only is technology not neutral, but it is political. How? I ask him, he replies, look at the way corporates have sought to influence patent and copyright laws. Boy, he's right on the money there. And how they have interfered in the setting up of standards. The latest one is net neutrality. He says, the digital one and zero reshaped the factory floor shop and reorganized the political equation between capital and labor. Algorithms have reshaped relationships and to political power structures. The Snowdens and Mannings, Mannings gone a little dark lately, have stirred up digital storms making political cover-ups onerous. But at the same time, we have a new set of threats that disrupt democratic processes. Fake news, troll armies, voting machine hacks, state surveillance, stateless money. And yes, yes, we love the stateless money. So, Tom, I want to learn more about this guy and what the heck is this guy really about, but I never heard of him. 
I don't know anything about him. I thought it was interesting for us to look at what he's talking about. He's for open software, as you could imagine. Open source is, I think, what they really meant. So he's part of the open source movement. I'm using open source right now. I'm using OBS. And OBS is OP, open source. I'm using OBS Studio, which if you want to create an... Oh, I'm on me and me alone. That's not right. How the heck did I get on that? There we go. Uh, I'm... I'm I'm using open source right now, and you, Lou, I don't know if you downloaded OBS Studio yet, but it's free. Yes, at, Li at Liberty Fest. Oh, you that's were right. There. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. So so, so, what do you think of uh, Mr. D'Souza? I mean, it's not, not a lot there, but it's interesting. Oh, oh it's very interesting because it's, in a lot of cases, it's the low tech that's going to take down the high tech. It is the simple things are going to take down the government. As I said, governments are always fighting the last war as they're buying more tanks and bombers and, and jets and, and all these other things. I, wh why, why do they need all these fighter jets when they haven't gone up against a military that has an air force in how long? <laughs> right. So I, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. I, it's, it, it, it's nothing short of a money laundering operation. But the thing is that they're always fighting the last war. The the example that you gave in the, in the shorter leash segment, leading to longer or to off the leash, was these little low tech toy drones. You had people going and flying these into a Russian base in Syria, and absolutely disrupting things. I, I'm I'm positive that those Russian soldiers felt unsafe after their secure space was violated. Safe space. And I'm, I'm sure they don't feel secure now. And immediately it cost Russia a whole lot more money because now it's not just that base. It's every base. It's all the just, bases. It's all the bases is belongs to us. Yeah. So, so <laughs> here, here's the solution. Okay. Magazine capacity laws. All right. No problem. 3d printing. High capacity magazines. You can't buy them in the stores no more. Okay, no problem. But you can buy them from somebody on the internet, and you can use your 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 magical internet drug money known as crypto. It's just like they passed some of these states that have passed these uh, bump fire stock bans. They they they're obviously I guess it's a good thing they they don't understand gun tech at all. You know there is a way. Uh, I I don't know how to do it, but I. Bet if I really put my mind to it, it wouldn't take me a terribly long time to do it. You don't need a bump fire stock to be able to fire your AR, uh, your semi-automatic AR, like you have a bump fire stock using only your hands. It's the way that you hold it and how you pull it against you. It's a system. I don't quite understand it. And it's about as effective as a bump fire stock, by the way. Bump fire stock. No, no, no. In in the in the case of Las Vegas, you had a dude that uh, he was shooting to a crowd of thousands with a. Uh, I guess you could say bump fire stock was was somewhat. Pra I'm going to put that in quotes. Practical, uh, but but there's hardly any real practical application for a bump fire stock. It is not effective. You don't get good aim. It is a toy. It is like it's a range toy. But they don't understand that. So yeah. they're putting well, all this are effort. These are people that talk about the shoulder thing that goes up. Right. <laughs> and then and the bullet button. and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. They're, they're... It, it fires faster because it's black. <laughs> well, yeah. It's just like you could take the, you know, you take the, oh, what the heck? When my, my brain's falling blank. The barrel it's, shroud. Now you take the Ruger. What's the Ruger called? It's it's chambered in five. Oh, the Mark II. Not oh. the Mark II. Ruger. Oh man, brain cramp. Anyway. Oh, I I know what you're talking about. Okay, so anyway, it, there's 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 the Ruger. Oh, why can't I think of it? it? Really bothers me. So sometimes my brain says, "Hey, I'm not giving you this information that I know you you know inside and out." So there's this Ruger. Ruger rifle chambered in two twenty three caliber. Uh, and. It looks like a traditional hunting rifle, and then you and then you got the AR beside it, and their capabilities are remarkably similar. But nobody's looking at that Ruger because it just looks like you know it's mini fourteen. Know, that's it, mini fourteen. So 
Uh, so you got the Mini 14, which looks more like a hunting rifle. So nobody's talking about that. You're talking about banning the AR. That's not the only 5.56, 223, 5.56 five, five, uh, semi auto rifle out there. And there's plenty of semi auto rifle. Hey, heck, give me a Marlin 3030, a lever action Marlin 3030, and I will destroy stuff. And that's like, there's there's a Marlin 3030 use size. I'll take that use size, Marlin 3030, and I will do some serious stuff with a Marlin 3030. That's a heavy yeah, round. Or, or, another great example is the Ruger 1022. And I used to build these. I, I love this because there's so many options. You, and you could probably build 10 distinctly different Ruger 1022 rifles. And it's a 22 caliber rifle. It, it, it's it's a it's a learning rifle. It's it's a plinker. It's for squirrel and rabbit hunting. And, but it's quiet. you can do these you could do these different things to it to make it look like a, a black and scary. And oh you yeah, can you make can it you can tack like, it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. You, you can make it full blown tactical. Yeah, you could tactical it out, and uh, all of a sudden you'd scary it, dude. It's, it's a twenty two, yeah. of course. In yeah. point of fact, uh, 223 is actually 22 caliber too. So, but it's very different round. <laughs> very yeah, it's, different round. it's about tw- it's about 20 <laughs> grains heavier, something like that. But anyway, well, it's uh, it's 3,000 feet per second. So, yeah, it's 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 foot pounds. Is I don't know what exact yeah. foot pounds are, but it's not even close. I mean, a, a, a 22 hits you, and it. M- It'll probably go through you unless it hits bone. It might not, but if a but if a two two through three round hits you at at reasonably close range, it's going to tear you up. I don't. I remember I saw a documentary about the you know the Miami FBI shooting, and the one FBI agent, the guy had a Ruger Mini fourteen, and he was firing two twenty three, uh, out two twenty three. I don't know if it was two two three or five five six, but you know. Similar, very, very. I mean, you can. It's pretty much the same thing. Pretty much the same thing, right? So that that round hit hit the one guy, in, the one FBI agent in his arm, and it just bounced down his arm, shattered it to bits. Oh yeah, that's what the two twenty three will do. And I've I've heard of instances where the impact of it hitting somebody in the arm, the impact was so great that it killed him. But but here's the thing. Okay, so so ban. Well, the this AR-15. FBI agent ban- was not killed, yeah. but yeah, that can happen. You can bleed out. No, I, I'm talking about the impact was hard enough. The oh yeah, it hit. knocked him back, and it yeah, it took but, a while for right, him to get so, back in the fight. So anyway, all right, let's let's, let's say they go banning rifles. Okay, well, in walks the 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 ghost gunner. Uh, it's really interesting because with the uh, Cody Liberator, Wilson baby, was, love yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. With the Liberator, it was it was the first uh, 3D printed gun, and the uh, the U.S. government had ordered Cody to take the plans off of off of uh, the internet because he had it on his website. And this is back in the time when I was the admin for the Freedom Fiends Facebook page. And it was funny. I, I posted the article that says, you know, U.S. State Department orders Cody, Cody Wilson to take down plans for uh for liberator and i went back a couple minutes later to program another post and the very first comment that was put up like a minute or two after i posted the article was a link to the plans on pirate bay yeah well yeah it's it's yeah. it's it's so, there, so here the head- there and everywhere so the headline should have read government tries to clean pee out of a pool using a spoon right yeah. Now, yeah. Cody Wilson because is it, making a legal issue of it, and you know yeah. he's doing the the James Madison thing. He's forcing the government to show what it really is. Uh, so, but the, so he's actually but, but, he's gone before the Supreme Court to try to get them to uh, order the State Department to to rescind this orders. But but as I've said numerous times, Cody Wilson. And his little inventions, releasing these little these little things out into the world, will do more to preserve gun ownership than the NRA, the Second Amendment, and every pol- every politician and petition combined. The NRA is controlled opposition. Uh, when when Las Vegas happened, at the NRA's first immediate response. I mean, they 
they could play it off how they like, but their first response was, oh, you know, the, the, the ATF, you know, they got to do something about uh, uh, regulating. If, if, these, if these bump fire stocks can, can turn your AR into a, into a full auto rifle, well, then that's already against the law. I mean, if they were really the National Rifle Association, the response should have been, hey, that full auto law should be done away with. Everyone yeah. should have a but, full auto. Yeah, and, but but the thing is that they're just a subsidiary of the thin blue line, or at least they act like it. They're controlled opposition. Yeah, and, and I so, believe in large part, even a lot of the gun quote unquote gun rights that you have are 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 it's it's a false hope that they give you. It's like what voting is. It's they don't. It's 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 what the lottery is for people that they know by and large that because of the system as it exists today, the ability for people to actually end up doing stuff that that really sings with them that they can really thrive in is really they're remotely small, but they have that hope of winning the lottery. They have that yeah. hope that the you know I can the hillbilly four hundred one k buying a lottery <laughs> ticket every week. That's it, and, and you know they have that hope that they can hold on to their guns when gun confiscation happens. And gun gun confiscation's hardly ever going to happen, if at all. And mm -hmm. and they have that hope by voting for the right person. Now let, let's talk about some more solutions. Uh, something else that just recently happened was uh, I know the Senate passed it by with the sixty vote margin. Uh, they agreed to expand the NSA's spying capability or spying uh, legal capabilities. The, the I, Senate, I'm pretty sure, I, I didn't. The Senate hadn't voted on that yet, but they're going to, and it's going to be I a thought they did. walk. Oh, maybe they, they did. did. I didn't see if they did, but okay. But in the so house, did the house they, vote on it. The house passed it, and in the Senate, okay. the Senate, I think the it's, Senate passed it too. Maybe they. Let me check that. I didn't didn't see that. If they did, maybe they just did it recently. Okay, Google. But they, they're going to its expansion of FISA Act. Not Pfizer, idiot. Yep, Senate eight hours ago. So they did it today. I missed this. Well. I've, I've already dealt with it. I've already basically the way that I, I've already covered that a few days ago. It was it was apparently it was not a, it was a no doubter that they were going so, to pass FISA sixty five so to thirty four. Can can I point yeah. this out? And I think I've seen this meme uh, in the House and in the Senate. In order for it to pass, it needed a significant you number of Democrats. Healthy, you might be missing the something. The same Democrats that are now saying that Trump is literally Hitler just voted to preserve Trump's power Hitler. to spy Pre on everyone. Voted to preserve Hitler's power to spy on everybody. Yeah. Now, they, they don't they don't really think that Trump is Hitler. This is all yeah, just they, theater. They, these are these are the same people that say that the police are a racist institution and only the racists should have guns. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, There's... so here's the thing. Uh, okay, so they, they've just they've determined that they should have more power. You know, the, these checks on government power is the government voting on whether their power will be checked. And in this case, they they determine that it's necessary for themselves to have more power. Uh, but <laughs> if, if if you're if you're in these different political groups, and I think I think you're in maybe some of these political groups, uh, the typical thing when something like this gets announced is somebody's going to start off with "Call your reps, call your reps, write the emails," and they'll start posting phone numbers to the congressional switchboard and and to the if if it's a local group, uh, it'll be to local politicians and and the party, you know, the the party bosses and stuff. Tell them that you don't want this. Well, first of all. I, I've already sworn a couple of times. First of all, they don't give a fuck what you want. All right, they never gave a fuck. You've what you already f nuked the show. Yeah. yeah, they're never they're never going to give a fuck what you want. Okay, so every time you call your reps, every time I every time I see one of these fucking fuckers start saying call your reps, <laughs> I, I I I picture some kid at Chuck E. Cheese beating the living shit out of the whack a mole. It's going, you take that, you fucking representative. Fucking fuckers! I, I've said the f bomb more in this show than I have than I have in the in the previous probably month combined because I really don't swear that much. But so anyway, this, so you're using this show to to purge the f's out of you. 
<laughs> this, this well, actually, I, I probably use a good portion of next month's allotment. Oh, good. But anyway, good. yeah, yeah. So I, I won't be. I won't even be. So able you're to investing in the future. Month. You're investing in the future then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I. But anyway, so I, I, I picture this kid saying, "You politician, here you take that. Here's your NSA spy. Here's your, here's your sugar tax." And 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 it just talking about every single one of these mud issues. Every time it hits, every time it hits the gopher on the head, you know, my roads, my social security, my, my schools, my my NSA surveillance, and just beating the living shit out of this poor synthetically three D printed gopher. <laughs> And, and what's it doing? So it's like, <laughs> call your reps, call your reps, send them emails, write them letters, get your crayons out, tell them how you feel. And once again, they don't give a fuck. But anyway, no. so uh, here's here's a thought. Go, go wrap yeah, the show up. Why don't you wrap the show up? Go ahead. Here, here's a little thought. Rather than writing your reps and begging for a longer leash, if you're one of these people that have skills, why don't you write a virus that when it's – uh, when when your emails or or whatever your uh, communication style, it, when the encryption is broken, uh, I'm not talking about like the somebody that has the has the other key to it. I'm talking about uh, when it's broken, you know, brute forced or whatever. Um, let's say that uh, let's say there's a virus in there that releases only when it's broken, and it infects the data center that holds it, and it it just turns that data center into a big giant storage facility of nothing don't don't write letters write viruses write that's, encryption that's that's a slogan that should be the your campaign slogan for the campaign that you're not running for office for <laughs> just yeah. don't, don't write letters don't, write, viruses. write viruses yeah <laughs> So I I, imagine this. Imagine if if you're the NSA and imagine if there's a bunch of people out there that that know how to to weaponize these computer viruses and all they're doing is – it's like they're going fishing. They're throwing a worm in front of a bass except the bass is the NSA. So uh, they're they're using shit to catch catfish basically because catfish are are scummy fish. Uh, They'll eat anything. So – yeah, so the the bottom feeders at, at the NSA and these are spy agencies that that are trying to recreate the Ministerium for Stasi uh the East German Stasi. So let, let, let's say you're throwing out all these all this bait, and they take the bait and and they bite into the bait, and oh, they find a hook, but the hook is actually a virus that shuts down their entire system and just absolutely corrupts it, or maybe it just dumps everything out. Who knows? But the bottom line is, you defended yourself against being spied upon. And it could yeah. all, it wouldn't just be it wouldn't just be for the NSA. It could be for any type of hacker that tries to get your information. So when when does hacking stop? It could be private sector or public sector. Hacking stops when it's more painful and dangerous to hack than it is to cooperate. Well, it's the basic uh, my basic goal in life, which is to raise the cost of coercion so high that it happens not at all. I'm not. I don't. That that that's a impossibility. But but that's that's the goal to get to to get ever closer to that point. Make it more and more cost effective to coerce. And when that happens, it's just like that's what happened over in Russia with those drones. It suddenly raised the cost. And don't get me wrong. I'm not defending the people that flew those drones because as it so happened, those people that you know. I mean, this is going to sound terrible, but pay attention to the techniques that these, quote-unquote, some of them actually are, I would call, by my definition, I would actually call them terrorists. I'm not going to say all of them are terrorists. The Turks call the Kurds terrorists. I don't call the, I don't consider them terrorists. But pay attention to what these, quote-unquote, terrorists are doing, to, to what these insurgents are doing. Uh, they, they may not have good ends. But they're showing you something. They're showing you methodologies that anyone can use if and when they have to to raise the cost of coercion. Because, you know, the United States is, like you said before, the most powerful country, uh, the most powerful military ever. But it can't hold land unless the people there want the land held. It's, it's too too costly. 
and 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 the track record going up against insurgencies is absolutely abysmal. Not, not just for America, but for for all the uh, all the all the superpowers major throughout the last yeah, I, at least the last two hundred years, if not more. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the the only the only time that an insurgency has ever effectively been stopped through military action was when there was just flat out genocide and they killed everything that moved. And then they lost, and then that that cost them a lot. Yeah, it really cost them so, a lot. And it's something that that you talked about raising the cost of coercion. If you look at the collapse of the Soviet Union, um, there can be an argument made that the arms rape arms rape. That, that is rape. technically correct. That's, that's the, a Freudian slip ha, that's not inaccurate. Hashtag me too. So <laughs> as the, the, the cost of the arms race helped to accelerate the demise of the Soviet Union. Uh, and it was going to meet its demise soon enough on its own because socialism can only last for so long. Uh, it, it, and as noted several times, it was the black market that, that kept that country from collapsing it, for as long as it did, but having all those troops in Afghanistan and, and trying to maintain the empire without an economy to support that sort of thing, uh, it is what brought it down. The Soviet Union, like Rome, collapsed under the weight of its own bureaucracy. And if you look at all the different things that were done to raise the cost of coercion, I'm not even talking about directly uh, done or deliberately done. I'm talking about here you have an action and here you have a result. You know, so like when, when people talk about the Hegelian dialectic, um, problem, action, solution, it, it's not really a conspiracy. It's, it's a natural progression of things. Problem, action, solution. I haven't heard. I've heard. Uh, pro pro problem, reaction, solution. Oh, bad. I thought it was, uh, 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 what is it? The mini fourteen theory, the mini fourteen antithesis and synthesis. Uh, I just got an interesting text from my brother. I don't know what he's talking about, but he said it's busting loose in D.C. This memo will bring down the government potentially, and I put a question mark. And he said, "You haven't heard? You have any idea what he's talking about? Anybody have any idea? Anybody? What happened while we were on the show? While we were talking about the end of governments?" The House investigators of the Russia probe produced a detailed member which, which was released to all House mem members. All right. And he says it's not yet public. What is, what is in it, man? They're going to get Bill Clinton on white water this time. Hillary's going down. They're finally going to nail George Bush. Oh, man. All right. Well, we're at the end of our show. I don't know if we talked through the end of a government or not. That would be interesting. <laughs> uh, but the, 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 the devolution will be broadcast. It won't be televised, but it will be broadcast on IS Daily. On IS Daily. IS Daily. And you can also go to iState.tv and see all of the the stuff, Lou, you, you know, you got to go to iState.tv. I'm telling you, you're going to see cool stuff there. I, like, I do go there a little bit. Okay, good. Because there's, 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 it's, it's, it's basically, I mean, I, I write articles. I can only write so many articles. I probably write one or two articles, like complete articles. All the rest, it's, it's a news aggregate. I am selecting news from across the webosphere that you're not seeing in one place. That would when be you're a feeling bitter, is it? When you're feeling bitter, is it called the Grudge Report? <laughs> uh, it's called the no. Actually, I call it the Fudge Report. So, <laughs> fudge, because I'm decent. All right, so uh, we're gonna wrap this show up. Uh, we will be back on Is Daily Thursday. You've been listening to Is Daily Thursday on on this is the Liberty Principle Facebook page, and if you're on the YouTube channel, uh, be sure that you go to isdaily.live, which just takes you to the archive page on iState.tv, and you can get access to this show as soon as I can, barring a technical snafu, I will have on that show page, you'll have the Facebook embed, so you'll hear the complete show, you'll have the YouTube embed, and you'll also have the audio file for those that like to listen in podcast form. 
And I'll be back tomorrow afternoon at 12.30 p.m. for headlines you may have missed. And, of course, we'll be back, Is Daily, we'll be back, Is Daily Monday, we'll be back at 9, 9.30ish, somewhere around there, p.m., because uh, my co-host, that's that's when he shows up. So, on that note, do you have anything, last things to say to our to our to our wonderful studio audience. If death happens on the thousandth cut, at what point do you smack away the knife? How many cuts does it take before you stop the knife? I'd say at some point you probably stop it when you start to realize that it costs more to let the knife continue to cut than it does to stop it. And for some people, and for some people, that won't happen. They'll just die. And on that wonderful, friendly note, I will leave you with this. I have my closing statement, Lou. I have my little closing sign-off thing, which I use for both headlines you may have missed and I'm using for this as well. Remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. So bear that in mind. Whenever you're reading any news out there, ask yourself who's behind the news and what's the agenda. And on that note, I'm going to say good night. Thank you, Mr. Lou Sander, for joining us here. Thank you, Paul Gordon, for joining us here. You've been had, and I've it been It was had. a pleasure being had. It was a pleasure having you. We'll see you, uh, we'll see you on this daily Thursday. We'll see you next Thursday. Same place. Good night, everybody. Good night.